going down the field. I'm comfortable with it. Let's do fourth grade science. Fourth yes. grade science. Okay, for $7,500, the fourth grade science question is, an element's atomic number is determined by the quantity of what subatomic particle in its nucleus? An element's atomic number is determined by the quantity of what subatomic particle in its nucleus. I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> Lauren has locked in her answer. All what right. are you thinking, Christy? All right, I am actually quite comfortable with this one. So subatomic is a smaller atomic particle inside the nucleus, which is the center part. Uh, we are talking about atomic number, which is also abbreviated by Z. And the atomic number is actually what defines an element, and that would be the number of protons. Because inside of, in the middle, you have protons and neutrons. But atomic number is the protons, and mass number is protons and neutrons. I am locking in protons as the atomic number. I said I had no death. idea what I just said, and then you just were showing off just then. I had to do something to make, compensate make for all the other questions. Really, really stupid. <laughs> Lauren, what did you say? Protons. Protons. Jenny, you've been on a roll. What'd you say? Protons. Protons. The ladies are all right. <laughs> okay, please pick another subject. What would you like, Christy? Let's do third grade life science. Third grade Adelaide. life science? Yeah. Yeah, let's do life science. All right. Get it right, you'll have 11,000. Here's the question. Okay. True or false, in humans, a father's chromosomes determine whether a baby will be a boy or a girl. True or false, in humans, a father's chromosomes determine whether a baby will be a boy or a girl. Lauren's locked in her answer. Now, you're in medical school. Yes. <laughs> we spend a lot of time with the chromosomes. Yeah, I'm so. thinking maybe this may be right up your alley. All right. Well, uh, when it comes to genomics and whatnot, a father's chromosomes is what determines whether a baby will be a boy or a girl. The mother's chromosomes is what determines the mitochondrial DNA. So I'm going to right. lock in true that father's chromosomes determine the sex of the baby. So I'm locking in true. True. Now, when you were saying that the mother's chromosomes determine the mitochondria DNA, I said, right, and Jenny just started laughing. <laughs> you think I didn't know that? No. No. <laughs> You're a smart kid. You've been perfect so far. Now, you said true. Let's see what Jenny said. True. You're about to run the table today, I know, seriously, Jenny. we should switch spots. The correct answer <laughs> is indeed true. Yes. Give the lady another $3,500. Good. Pick your next one. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go with the first grade question again, you know, since I got that one it's so quick, you know, I'm gonna go with first grade astronomy. First grade yeah. astronomy. Yeah. You got $5,000. The $10,000 question is, in astronomy, what star is closest to Earth? In astronomy, what star is closest to Earth? Alana is not writing very quickly. What you thinking, Lakeisha? <laughs> uh -oh. um. Kind of a blank canvas right oh, now, huh? Star, okay, a star. Your classmate locked in their answer. So, is the sun a star? I don't know. Is that considered a star? It's not a planet. The sun's not a planet. Maybe you were absent on this day in the first grade. <laughs> I probably was. <laughs> um, I will tell you this, not only have they answered, every single one of them have answered correctly. All right. All right, Lakeisha, we okay. need an answer in astronomy. Okay, what star say, is closest to the Earth? I'm going to say the sun. Your 
were right. You got $10,000. <laughs> So pick a subject and let's go for fifty thousand dollars. Fourth grade math. Fourth grade math, yes, she fourth said. Grade math. <laughs> Mom. Is math a good subject for you, Jacob? It's my best subject. Your best subject. Oh, oh yes. All right, for fifty thousand dollars, here's your fourth grade math question. How many sides are there on a trapezoid? Your classmate over here just locked in his answer. Do you know what a trapezoid is? Uh, uh, no. No. Um, but I'm trying to remember. By a show of hands, how many people in the classroom know what a trapezoid is? Everybody. Trapezoid. You've got a cheat left. You can peek at Jacob's paper. Jacob bailed you out on the previous I question. I know, Jacob's. I'm going to use my peek cheat. You're going to use your last cheat? Yes. All right. How many sides are on a trapezoid? May we please see what Jacob had to say? Jacob said four. Doesn't a square have four sides? Oh. A square has four sides. Why would they call it a trapezoid? Well, that, that, that don't make sense. Or no, maybe. Don't forget, Jacob's only 10 years old. He still has to ask for another cookie. <laughs> All right. I'm going to, since, you know, I, I trust Jacob. He helped me get 25. So I'm going to go with his answer and say four. So four sides is your answer. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I will tell you this, Lakeisha. Oh, God. A trapezoid has a total of two parallel sides. It also has two non-parallel sides. And that equals four sides, and you got $50,000. Pick one, and let's go for $1,000. I think I'll go with math. math. Second grade math. All right. For $1,000, the second grade math question is, what number is exactly halfway between one and seven on a number line? What number is exactly halfway between one and seven on a number line? Classmate Cody has locked in his answer. You have a smile. All right. So exactly between one and seven. So we've got one, two, three, seven, six, five. That only leaves four. So I'm going to lock in four. <laughs> got to be the easiest thousand dollars you ever made in your life. You're exactly right. There it is. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Thank you. Five, six, seven. All right. Pick another subject and let's play for 50,000. All right. Let's go for astronomy. 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 All right. Listen carefully. The $50,000 question is, true or false, an object's mass is different on the moon than it is on Earth. True or false. An object's mass is different on the moon than it is on Earth. Olivia has locked in her answer. An object's mass. Now you study brains. I do. Okay. Does mass come into play when you're studying a brain? Occasionally. Depends on who the person is, That's right? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know that you weigh less on the moon. But I don't think that your mass actually changes. So I'm going to say false. You do 
still have your save left. I Let's do. see if this fifth grader can save you. Take a look at the board. Olivia said false. Okay. An object's weight is different on the moon, and an object's mass is the same on the moon. The answer's false. You got $50,000.